I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today, we're gonna make a custom grip for a gimbal. Sometimes when we shoot our videos, we use a gimbal, and this keeps the camera level and still while you're moving it around. Now there's a new version of this gimbal, and it's got a bunch of different features, but one of the things I like the most is that there's another handle that comes out and comes up. So you can use two hands to stabilize it, and you can lean it over like this and hold it just from the top. Well, rather than buying a whole new gimbal, I actually just wanna make that handle. This entire top section is supposed to move around, so I'm gonna grab right here the part that's still, and to make this really strong but lightweight, I wanna use thick aluminum, probably quarter inch. So I'm gonna grab around here, it's gonna come out, and then the handle part will come up so that it can clear this arm. Now I wanna do this in Fusion 360 so I can get really precise measurements. Let's go do that now. I've got those files ready and now it's time to cut the pieces out. There's a bunch of different tools you could use to cut through this aluminum. In fact, aluminum cuts really well with most woodworking tools. This is gonna be quarter inch thick though, so you have to have kind of a powerful saw to get through it. A metal cutting bandsaw would be a great way to cut the profile of the pieces and to get the hole for the gimbal, a hole saw would do a really good job. But luckily, I've got another brand new tool that I get to try out and this is the Wazer. Now this is a desktop water jet cutter. It can cut all sorts of stuff, aluminum obviously, but also stainless steel, titanium, glass, ceramics, and it does it all with water. You don't have to have any special infrastructure to use this machine, you just need to have a faucet and a drain and normal 110 power to run the whole thing on. Once you've got this thing set up, all you have to do is add some abrasive to the hopper, then you use their software to add your design. This will take any 2D design through the SVG format, and once you've got it uploaded, it'll just cut it out. I just got this thing and I've just got it set up, so let's go ahead and give it a shot. These pieces fit together really well. We'll work on the handle in just a little bit, but let me show you where this is going. This is gonna fit right around that piece, which means we're gonna have to open this up eventually. We'll do that in a few minutes. First, I wanna soften all of these corners. It is a nice clean cut, but they don't feel really great to touch, so I wanna kinda of round them over just a little bit. I'm gonna to try to make some scales for the side of this handle just like you would for a knife. And so I'm starting with some maple because eventually this whole thing's gonna be black. So I think the maple will really stand out. So I'm gonna cut out two pieces of this scrap material and then we'll start shaping them. I've got the shaping about finished on this handle, and you can see that there's actually some wormholes in this wood, this was scrap. So it's not gonna be a perfect handle, but I think it'll work just fine for this particular case. Now before I knock these pieces off of the aluminum to finish all this up, I'm gonna go ahead and drill some holes through all three of these pieces so that I can align them later on and get them really tight and in place permanently. I'm gonna put this thing in a clamp because it doesn't have a flat bottom and it's likely to roll around, plus it keeps your hands a little bit further away from it. And to make sure that the bit doesn't wander on that round surface, I'm gonna use a brad point bit. It's got a little brad tip on the end there that will stick in and stay where I start it. I'm gonna swap out this bit now that I've got the hole started because I don't think that brad point is gonna do super well in the aluminum but I know this one will do just fine. And since I've already got the pilot holes started, I should be able to get through it with this bit.
Now that we've got the handle pretty much worked out, we're gonna move on to this part. We need to open this up so that we can wrap this around the gimbal and make this kind of a collar that we can close back. But before I cut this off, we need to drill a hole and add a screw. And to do that, we're gonna use a tap to add some threads inside the aluminum. I got some three mil screws and I have a tap that matches that size. So we're gonna tap those holes that we just drilled. I've got those holes tapped now, and the screws went in really well, so I think that's gonna work. But I did wanna point out that I actually had to do this twice. The first one, the tap broke off down inside the hole, and I'm not sure if I had the hole that it was going into a little bit too small, or maybe the inexpensive tap just broke because it wasn't strong enough. But either way, I had to go back and make a second piece. Luckily, the second one is good to go. So now we're gonna cut these pieces off. All right, so I'm gonna cut through this piece right here, and I'm gonna use the miter sled to hold it perpendicular to the blade, but I have to put in a little spacer to make sure that it's gonna stay where I want it. And I'm gonna try to cut past this section a little bit so there's enough of a collar to drive in the screw, and hopefully this blade won't mess up the threads on the inside, but if so, we'll just have to retap them. That cut actually went really well, and you will notice that it had to take out the kerf, the thickness of the blade here, and that's actually gonna work out in our favor. This hole was made the exact same diameter as the handle of the gimbal, and by missing that little piece, when we tighten these things down, it will give us a good clamp pressure around the handle. So let's put in the screws to see if this thing works. And I, I do notice that I cut this a little bit further down. It should have been closer to the center, but it, it's gonna work out. If I had had it closer to the center, I could have slid it right over here, but it actually have to go in a little bit lower and come up onto it, which is fine. But then those pieces will attach just like that. Now, depending on the fit, we may have to end up going and putting a piece of leather or EVA foam or something on the inside of this. So it has a nice good grip and is not gonna tear up the aluminum of the handle. But I wanna make sure that it fits first. I've done some test fitting and it fits pretty well, but I am gonna add a small piece of EVA foam right here and right here, and that will really hug around the handle. Another thing that I need to do is drill out these holes in this portion so that only the threaded part is down here. That will let these drop through the top collar and then thread down into this part to actually tighten the two pieces together. So that actually works pretty well. It grabs it just fine, and I'm probably gonna play with the amount of EVA in there just to get a nice, snug fit. But it's doing what it's supposed to do. So the next step is to take this part off and go weld on the handle. The original plan was to TIG weld them so I could have some practice doing that, but I'm having some trouble with my machine. So rather than waiting to figure that out, I'm gonna go ahead and braze them instead. We did a whole bits video on brazing metal, and if you wanna find out a little bit more information, you can hit that link to find out all the details. I've got the two pieces set up on these one, two, three blocks to make sure that they are perpendicular to each other and they're held in place, squeezed between these two blocks. So this should keep them square while I heat them up and braise them. With the brazing done, I went ahead and cleaned up all the surface of this to get rid of any other stuff before powder coating. You could just spray paint it, but the powder coat will give it a little bit better of a surface, a little bit harder of a finish. But one thing I wanna do before I powder coat it is actually fill in 
these areas with the thread so they don't get coated. So I've got these small pieces of bamboo and I'm just sticking them in there. That way we can spray the rest of the whole thing and it won't get down in those holes. Now the powder coating process is really simple. You put this lead on the thing that you're gonna be coating, then you use this gun to spray the powder over it. This thing gets charged and so the powder is drawn to the metal and then once you get it completely covered, you put the whole thing in an oven and it bakes that powder into a hard finish. This is a DIY kit. It's a pretty inexpensive option to be able to powder coat something and you can get a smaller oven which isn't terribly expensive and it's a great way to put a hard finish on one of your projects. After I let these pieces cool off, they are all finished and they're looking pretty good. Now there's only a couple of things left to do here. One is to put in the EVA foam and I'm gonna glue that in with some CA glue. And the last thing is to put the handle pieces on. I've got an aluminum rod here that we're gonna use to feed through all three of these pieces. But first I gotta cut these down to some smaller sections. I got all the powder coated parts covered up here with some masking tape and some paper. I even covered this strip down the middle just to make sure that it's the same finish as the rest of it. So I'm gonna cover all of the wood with a few coats of spray poly. Over the past couple of days, I've put several coats of finish on the handle. It's all shiny and good to go. Now I've just gotta remove the masking and we can put this whole thing together. Now that we've got this second handle on here, it's gonna do a couple of things. One, it makes it a lot easier to just steer and control where you want this to go. And even though it's an active gimbal, it's trying to smooth it out. This, just having two hands will help quite a bit. The other thing is that now we can go to an underslung position really easily so we can switch back and forth with very little effort. If you don't have this handle, then you have to work everything from down here, which just makes it a little bit harder you can actually see the microphone shake just a little bit because I'm having to hold the weight of all this with this hand. Having two hands just makes it even smoother. All right, let's try this thing out. Let's swap cameras so you can see what it looks like. This thing actually works out really well, better than I expected to be honest. We played with it for just a few minutes and it does a great job at making it easy to transition between the low shot and a normal shot and it's very smooth. Now I think there's two improvements that could be made to this thing. One would be adding a quick release so you could easily take it on and off the gimbal. That would be really awesome. And another thing would be to possibly make it out of thicker material. The thicker material you have around the collar is just going to make it more stable over time, but the quarter inch aluminum seems to work out just fine. Now I used a Wazer for this project and it's a great tool and it has a lot of capability. I'll put a link to it down in the description, but remember you don't have to have an expensive tool like that to cut aluminum. Even with quarter inch aluminum, you could use a bandsaw or any other woodworking tool to cut it and you could make this on your own for sure. If you learned some stuff from this video, I would love to hear about it. Please let me know down in the comments because that's just gonna help us make better videos going forward. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may wanna check out, so go click on some of those videos. And if you're not subscribed, please go ahead and do that as well. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. We're using a bandsaw or another hand-based tip.
you can change positions easier. And easier layer, layer, layer. This thing actually works out really cool. Really, really cool. Ah! We got this second 